episode of Cigars and Sea Stories. We have Bennett Tanton and Sebastian Jocelyn and Mike Penny sitting down for a little impromptu. I get to choose the topic today, people. This is fantastic. Best things you've ever read on a porta shitter wall. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, dude. Well, can, uh, can it also include stuff that we've actually read, just like sitting? Read, seen, Anything porter shitter in porter shitter. It, it has, has to, to be, be. What's that? Does it have to be real? What do you mean real? And you make shit up. <laughs> <laughs> it is sea Can stories. I... Oh, dude, allow me to kick this off. Okay, so one of the funniest jokes, in my opinion, for a little inner service thing. We don't have an army guy on here, so we'll just laugh to ourselves like idiots. I am an army guy, you ass. Well, you know what I mean. A real army guy yeah. who's like, oh, I'm a ranger and blah, blah, blah. Right? Like one yeah, of those. You guys. went over there, there is, but there you didn't. You right? Complimentary one, Michael. What? You motherfucker. Are you going to answer it? This I'll son of a bitch. No. Telemarketers always call us when we record. No, it's actually my job, I think. But anyway. Oh, those people again. <laughs> They'll love this episode. All right. So here's my thing. One of my favorite jokes that I read on the inside of a porter shitter wall is, why does the army say hua and marines say ura? And it's because you can't say ura with a dick in your mouth. Oh, my God. <laughs> right? So, uh, I'm a big fan of that one. Uh, the other thing that I'm a huge fan of, and, you know, I, I could never really do it because I've got a good imagination, but the poor bastard who draws porn on the inside of the porter shitter wall, J.O.'s to that? I don't know. There's so, I, like Now, you know, well, you got to question the guy's motive. Is he drawing it for everybody else? Right. Or is he drawing it for himself? If he draws it for himself, then it's kind of like, it's kind of sick, you know? You're jerking off to your own kind of, it's like yourself yeah, in a way. Like, right. Weird. It's oh, kind of oh. weird, but... If you're drawing it for other people, that means that you're intentionally like kind of part of their intimate life, and you're it's kind of weird, you know, <laughs> it's tickling their balls. It's, it's like of... remember that episode of House of Cards where the guy's explaining something, and then the dude in the bottom rack is Jay Owen. You're like, wow, that's really messed up. Yeah, yeah. E either way, you're a creeper in that situation. Yeah, that's so that, the drawer. That, 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 I mean, that's a really good facto. point, Jocelyn. I'll tell you what. Busted on this one. I'll tell you what's funny though is we had this one. So my spotter convinced our interpreter, who was a virgin Afghan male and had no idea what women were like down there. And he was like, well, you got to watch out because they have vagina teeth. I might say something very and controversial right here, though, but does I wonder what he knows about males down there. <laughs> Just saying. Uh, yeah, it's a, <clears throat> yeah. Chai boy. That's the cultural stuff we're not supposed to talk about. But anyway. Chai boy. Man boy Thursdays is a cultural thing that we can't talk about. That shit's filthy and disgusting and wrong in every single way. We can definitely talk about it. But this guy wholeheartedly believed that women had teeth in their vagina. And I what was like, yeah, dude. They're like. <laughs> right. And I'm like. Ugh. and And so my spotter draws out vagina teeth and, <laughs> and so somebody had drawn one of those spread eagle lady images and uh and so my spotter went in there and actually added teeth to it and joey was like no man i saw american women i've seen like american man drew an american woman in here you know and all this other shit and we're like, uh, no, Joey, man, like you totally missed it. That even has vagina teeth. The guy drew it accurate. It's anatomically correct, Joey. And he's no. And he goes over to these shitters that we had, and rips open the wall, looks at it, and there's vagina teeth on the inside of the border shitter porn. Yes. Attention to detail, people. When you fuck with people, there needs to be attention to detail. He even like drew it out on a napkin and the whole nine yards. Yeah. That dude thinks that if he sticks his dick in a woman, there's teeth. 
It's going to bite that shit right off. Which is kind of good because it turned out that Joey was a goddamn terrorist selling fucking secrets to the enemy. So we told him he was going on leave, put him on a helicopter, and then he went to prison. <laughs> oh, man. You Did were, you, you were talking you about Chai Boys? That movie? What's that? That movie. Um, fuck. I think it's called Teeth. Where this girl's vagina has teeth. No. I think <laughs> I've heard of something like that. No. Like a nineties like B rated movie or something like that. And no, it was like, this was this was like nineteen like two thousand five or two thousand seven or something like that. And the chick's vagina has teeth. Huh. Look it up. I think it's on IMDB Read or something. Me. It's called Teeth. All I'm right, next sure. Next porter shitter topic. Look left, look right, look up, look down. And then it just sends you in circles. Did you guys ever read that one? There's there was you know what some about? different variations of that and then eventually we're, we're you get ignoring somewhere. you, Michael. We're figuring this out. What are you talking about? Vaginity still? Yes. We're trying oh, yeah. to figure out an algorithm in which that can actually happen and what universe that's happening so we can set Rick's portal gun to the right one. I want to see this for real. This is going down a Rick and Morty path. Got it. Got it. Teeth. That's it. It's called Teeth. Oh 2007. Are you on IMDb right now? I am. I am. Yes. What happened this late? My goodness. Wow. That's... Dawn grows That's up awesome. shadow of a nuclear power plant in high school. While her biology class studies evolution, she realized she may have a hidden curse, an adaptation. <laughs> she lives with her mom, stepfather, and hard ass <laughs> stepbrother. She, she likes Toby, a guy at school, and he likes her. <laughs> and she adaptation. takes a pledge to remain chaste until marriage, so they date in groups watch g-rated movies and don't kiss but the power of teen hormones is great so temptation beckons dawn <laughs> oh has an admirer in ryan and when oh my god he's happened, it. an unexpected twist with toby she turns to ryan for oh help oh my god yeah man that's basically her pussy has teeth <laughs> oh man i just loved how you were like an adaptation and then just roll right into it. All right. So I thought you were going to pause no there, question. but you would win. You, would you utilize it? No, wait. If I was to her? No, if you were you and you met her no. in real life, you're afraid of the teeth? I'm afraid. Think about yeah. that for a second. I would never. Think about you're afraid of putting your well, uh, no. teeth are. Are you sure? They make you, beautiful women every. It? They make beautiful women every day. Nope. That's a whole new definition of snatch, bro. That ain't happening. So it's the looks of it, but not the utilitarian. So you're you're saying it's not because of the fact that it can bite you. It's because it's disgusting. Look, let's make two things clear. All right. I I don't want it all, cut off. All women, all women yeah, are but fantastic. You've gotten a blowjob before. Now, it's a good point. Teeth there. Now, so, now I here's mean, unless the thing, it has a mind of its own, I and, mean, and, that's, and that's what I'm trying to own. figure out. So that's maybe the I'm... vagina is like this vindictive, like, like fuck you, like you know, maybe it's it's fuck a praying yeah. mantis. No, oh, like, eats... all of a sudden, right? Like she doesn't want this that. is like, not where come, I thought and then this it's was like, going. Bam. Boom, this, it's gone. This was not expected. <laughs> And suddenly, like, you're just Theon, and you're just like, fuck, man. Fuck. What just happened? <laughs> Fucking, he's got a, And she's just she's looking a, at you in the face, and you're just like, ah, ah. She's got a bolt. She's got a Bolton pussy. No. Eye to eye contact and her chompers on your knob. Not happening. No. Oh, I'm thinking about That's it. That's awful. I'm thinking about it. What are it. we talking about? How does this happen? I don't know. Oh, somehow we talked about teeth. Oh, because you're. Your hot, your interpreter, right? And you oh, guys I know the thread that, that we walked down. Do you want to go back to Porter Shutter stories? Plus, <laughs> <laughs> it oh all makes you good radio. Whatever. The nice, okay. So check this out. The nicest thing about a Porter Shitter is that you've got a pisser that doubles as a spitter. You always has, you always have a place for your rifle, which means you can always hang your cover because that just goes over the barrel. 
right? I mean, like, you there's a system to it. And if you bring your toilet paper roll, your wipes, I mean, whatever additional essentials you may require, you know, I mean, like, it's really not the worst thing in the world, you know, in comparison to, like, open pit plywood shitters with flies buzzing around your head. You know, I did prefer the little wag bag tents, though. Yeah, those I mean, at nice. least then you only dealt with your own stench because the, the bag pulled off like you hauled away the actual smell. Yeah. So none of it remained. That was a good system. And but then you, the pisser was behind that wall. And so you didn't really smell that. So, I mean, you had this vague wafty odor of that vinegar, disgusting. Ugh. See, but like I, I swear to God, I'm not even playing around. If we went around to like uh, like cop eight or whatever, I am not even like joking when I walked over to the Porter shitter, you know, in need, I'm like, I'm going to find the one that has the most graffiti on the inside. I want to see what these fuckers are writing about. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I don't know why. Maybe I'm just the guy who appreciated Porter shitter art, but I would sit there and I would read some of the poems. I wasn't much of an influencer in the Porter shitter scene so much as I definitely took in. I just want those guys out there to know. <laughs> You had no, an influ- I was not a trendsetter in the Porta Shitter community. I do appreciate right. the following that we have garnered over the years. Thank you to everyone contributing. Well, and it's always like, you know, like Squidmire is a queer, <laughs> you know, and then somebody's got a little dick or whatever. You've always got that stuff. Shit talking on all fronts. Yep. You've got, I mean, there's all... There's, <laughs> it's not like when you sit down in a civilian head and you see somebody with sheer hatred scribble like, you know, like, fuck you into the side of a fucking what, toilet stall. You're talking about some dude who is bored with a Sharpie baking in this fucking port shitter in the middle of the desert, just sweating and- balls while he's dropping a deuce like, oh yeah, roses are red, violets are blue, you know? <laughs> And he's pissed off because some army dude in a chow hall, air conditioned all day, said his fucking camis are too dirty, so he can't get a lunch. And he has to get someone to bring. And so he walks out and he's like, fuck this, I'm going to take a shit and take it out on the wall. See, that's what happens. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Anyway. Vengeance will be mine. My (laughs) voice will be heard. Dude, I'm telling you. I have been in a port of shitter. And felt a thud against the wall because they just kind of like put them side by side by side by side. And in the heat of the day, especially on that second tour to Ramadi, I have felt somebody like, like, hey, hey, bro. Oh. You're right in there. You okay? Hey, <clears throat> get the fuck up. Get the fuck up right now. You're going to die. <laughs> like you're you pulling right? open the shitter like, dude, <laughs> you're going to need, you're going to need some fucking... You're going to need some wet naps or something. I don't know. We're going to have to hose your ass down. That's it. Dude, Let's balls hot. And then you're lethargic yourself, so you're like, eh. Right. Let's, let's get him out. <laughs> Hurry up. Oh, my like, God. <laughs> Especially those Hescos. Because they had the cami net that was over top of him. That was fine. But, oh, my God. The Hescos didn't allow for any airflow whatsoever. And you're just right. baking. And they were also not, like, it was just side, you know? I mean, if anything happened to fall right in there, it would have concentrated it and pink missed you even worse. It's just, if it happened to fall near you or on the top of them, you'd probably be okay. Do you remember on the first tour, how the shitters almost overflowed? Like, because they they like there was some issue with the safety with the like we found out the first set of cleaner guys were bad and so we had to get a second set or something. Okay, so that's initially what I heard, but then I also heard a sea story from a guy who was over on Junction City around that time, who's in the army, and he said that one of the shitter trucks blew up, got hit by a mortar. Yeah. <laughs> So whether or not the guys were terrorists or their truck got hit by a mortar, I mean, there was nobody there to suck all the poop out of it. So. Did anyone have a funeral for our feces in there? 
Ugh. That. It's so gross. Uh, is that brown mist? See, but hold on, though. Then you have the opposite end of the spectrum. You ever been the guy who's like number one, number two in there, whatever, and you've got like a serious MRE bomb that's just hanging low in the girdle? And like, oh, man, when we get back over to Bivouac, I'm going to hit up that head. And, you know, you launch into this thing. It's, like, still wet on the inside of the porter shitter. You're like, oh, dude. Uh, and then, droop. And you got just blue stink eye. Bam. It just shoots right back up at you. You drop a plopper. Oh, uh, stop it. Boom. The memory. Uh, the smurf oh, dude, whenever... The Whenever smurfets. anything splash back up, you're just like violated oh, in a hundred It's so deep. Ways. It's so deep. The splashing. It. It's got a bidet-like effect. No, uh, the worst was if it wasn't even a lot. It was just that one drop, and you feel that cold, and you're like, Ugh. Oh, oh, no. God. I just got the chill. <laughs> See? See? <laughs> Everybody who's been there knows what oh, I'm talking God. about. You're all disgusted. Oh. Talk about Porter. Shutter. Shutter. Remember, right. if you're driving right now, I hope you didn't get in a car accident because you started convulsing <laughs> in your seat. Yeah! Everyone's got, everyone's got goosebumps. They're just thinking about that shit. Uh, All right, so, Porta Shitter. Has everyone... Everyone's going to be crying in the shower tonight. Like, <laughs> just shivering. <laughs> Good God! Has that, did anyone watch the X-Files? Did yes. Watch Religiously. That? So yes. how about that one episode of that creature that like grew up like part human and part leech or some shit or some kind of like something and it and attacked that dude in the porta shitter mm -hmm. or in the outhouse? Do you mm -hmm. remember that? Where it like lived in the in the sewers and shit? You have no idea how oh, often I think of that. You have that, no okay, fucking so, idea. So at Fort Drum, we have these we have these huge. I don't know. They're like all made of concrete, right? And they've got like these these pits that are like it's like a giant septic tank down there, right? But it's just like I don't know. The the shit and piss has to be feet deep, right? Ugh. And I kid you not, like you drop like a rock or something down there, and it it's a good ten foot gap between your ass on the shitter and the freaking water, right? right? But if like you drop like something in there, it's got the like like you're dropping shit into a pool, right? So if you got like six or seven dudes lined up on that taking a shit, it sounds just like <laughs> crazy as fuck, right? Well, I remember at night if you went to had to go take a shit in the middle of the night, um, you were so fucking freaked out. And I told everybody about this episode, and dude, you have to go watch it, oh. like you know. And they all did, and nobody could take a shit. Like, <laughs> we had like we we put motherfuckers on like guard, you know what I mean? Oh. To like watch the freaking hole while dudes took shits at night because it was fucking freaky. You think something's gonna come? Some fucking thing's gonna come jumping out of the fucking shit or fucking water? Oh it's like my horrible. god! But if you guys have never seen that episode, not sure which one it is, but that shit'll fuck you up. Yep. watching that dude i don't need any more phobias or brain issues i'm barely i'm barely coming <laughs> have you back seen, right now barely, man have you seen on, man. have you I'm seen the picture have you seen the picture of the guy who's like always check the toilet and it's got a tarantula inside of the toilet but then if you look closely the shadow is like this giant foot and a half long cock and it's got that spider that's down inside that's reminiscent of what you're talking about because I always check. It, like, I always lift up and I, I just got to make sure we're good down there. I'm going to leave nothing to chance. Well, especially where you are, where literally, like, there's, you got Black Widows. We killed that, uh, what was it? Diamondback? Whatever on that front porch. Remember? Oh, yeah. I, I cut its head off with a shovel. You that was cool. The Eastern Diamondback rattlesnakes. There, was that? No, that was a water moccasin, wasn't it, from the creek? Yeah, I think so. Oof. Yeah, but still, I mean, it was right there at the front door. It was like, are you kidding me? Oh, yeah. Like, what else is poisonous out there that, that you can literally just walk out and be like, all right, well, I'm done now. Everything. <laughs> that, was, that was a bad roll of the die. 
half the shit, half the fucking wildlife. It's all good, man. It's we're fine. We're good. We're perfect. Well, Mike's Mike's hairy enough, so if it tries to bite him, it'll just hit like a Brillo pad. I will, just... I will battle it to the death, and I will win, and then I will rush myself to the emergency room, and tell me you have anti venom, right? I will. I will probably tourniquet myself, no matter what snake bites me. I will probably just do that, so that there's no more blood flow going through there, and try to limit the amount of poison going to me. Maybe that's a bad move. I don't know. I'm trying to keep. What my heart would rate you low. use in your mind to keep your heart rate low and chill? You know, what would you think about? A Jo two three times on the way to the hospital would be fine. No, wait a minute. That's yeah, wait. You're gonna elevate. Rate. Yeah. <laughs> you got to think about something um, like. Re- calming and reversing, you know, like, uh, I, <laughs> I, I would think about baseball. I would think about a lazy Sunday afternoon out on the hammock, just with my iced tea and a cool breeze, a white suit head to toe. Mm. And then a snake bites you in the ass. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I a don't white know. suit isn't so white no more. I've got <laughs> that snake bite on the rump. How do There I was on the plantation. It looks like I board. got bit by a vampire. <laughs> I do declare these snakes of white poisonous. <laughs> a mint julep in hand. Uh, when the fuck did uh, Colonel Sanders get on the show? I don't... <laughs> Does he declare a lot of stuff? Yeah, he sure does. I do declare I this do chicken declare. is the best chicken you'll ever eat in your damn life. I bet that motherfucker. I think I got that off some like that was foghorn leg creature or something. My friends, I do declare <laughs> foghorn leghorn. There it is. I say, I say. <laughs> I love it. I say, I say. Holy shit! Oh man, the douchebaggery never ends on this show. No, not really. You're correct. It hey, was, uh, first time. Oh, got it. So, I was one of those guys. Like I always, I dipped when I was overseas. I smoked when I was overseas. Um, thank God I don't now. But I would throw in a fatty, and then I would walk around the hooch. And Sebastian probably remembers this. Like, I'd be slapping the tin, throw it in, and he's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm going to go fuck with the boots, and then I'm going to go take a shit. And that's what I'm going to do. And the reason why I went to fuck with the boots is because I needed to have something to do while I was, like, walking around doing whatever, and this hog leg I just threw in was working its way through the guts, just loosening everything up, getting it ready. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know... you. You get like Fowler and Jagley to do something, all of these other guys. And, uh, and then, and then I even remember when O'Brien one time was like, that does not sound good. And I'm like, gentlemen, dude, that does not work your advantage. Lopez is like, yeah. And Lopez is like, (laughs) oh, Penny, she was sweating. (laughs) And I'm like, gents. I'm going to be right back. And I got up and I'm like, I'm like pinching butt cheeks all the way out to the porter shitter. It worked every time. I don't know what you mean that it's not up to my advantage. And then I sit in there and I've got my spinner. We had to head out on something where it was like, hey, we got five minutes. It wasn't QRF. Oh. But it was something. Yeah, I remember that. Oh. And you were just sitting at your truck and I had come up on you and you were just pissed on your hood. Just like fuming and like taking this dip out and just throwing it on the floor. <laughs> uh, yeah. I thought, I you, mean, were, you know, I thought you were talking the, the about the most inopportune time is when anything like that strikes. Right. I mean, how many times are you just sitting there? And you're like, Oh my God, like this is the most pain my colon has ever been in. Like you're pinching loaf and you're about like stepping out on what could be a 12 hour Ooh. patrol and your, your entire life flashes before you. You're like, I'm done. I'm done. My prostate is going to explode. Like so much pressure is there. It's just going to, I'm going to be, I'm going to be dead. Well, and 
the thing that I didn't, yeah, uh, definitely that happened, especially, or like we're in a firefight around a cordon or something like that. And you're totally fucked. There's nowhere to go. But, <laughs> but what I never understood was in hurricane point, just to the right of the fucking entrance. When you came through that little Hadrian's wall or whatever the fuck we had, <coughs> we had the ability to put Porter shitters. And on the second tour, we had Porter shitters that were over there. Countless times I had to run all the way back from the clearing barrels over to the nearest Porter shitter. And then when cat black was over there, they were like, fuck you. There is no way you were using our shitter. So I'd have to run all the way past the staff NCO shitters all the way down to ours in order to make something happen. That was bullshit assholes and you know why they didn't have him near the clearing barrels and this honestly makes perfect fucking sense to me they said the shitter truck would be in the way of the gate so if qrf had to go out we would have to get around the shitter truck if you put them over near the walls then you're in front of the defcon that we had or whatever yeah, the fuck but, it was. but they could have put them offset and had the place the shitter truck been <laughs> or come behind them because remember that dirt lot that it was right behind the shitters or right behind the clearing barrels. Right. Like, adjacent to that is where shitters could have been, and they could have taken care of all the work in that dirt lot. See? But then you'd have to move the clearing barrels closer to the front gate. Yeah, logistics. Everybody has that story. Like, why are the shitters out of place? <laughs> and then, if, you, if, if you've ever been on a fob... And then everybody's got the, like, I don't know about you guys, but I had to fucking build my own shitter before. Remember the shitter that was at ECP North with all the pisser tubes and everything else? That was yep. us. I was the guy who was in there with a shovel breaking all that shit up. I can find those pictures, I bet. Nice. Oh, that sucks so bad. That was decades you know, of urine. Another tool to use in your repertoire. It's like, if you... Ever need a pisser built into the side of a building like ad hoc? Ugh. Mike, do it. No, I won't. <laughs> I'll tell you how you well, can. Exactly. There you go. We put the pisser tube in there, and they were like, send a patrol out there to see if the pisser tube's done. I'm like, yeah, here's what I'll do. I'll shove enough tube down in there in order for post I don't know, four or whatever the fuck to see it. But no, I'm not going to go down. There's... I mean, there's decades of urine. People have fucking pissed down here. Like, this is insane. Plus, on top of it, I mean, what if you get capped right there? Like, we're purposely pissing right there because if these motherfuckers come after us, they have to climb up a mountain of urine-soaked, fetid, disgusting filth in order to get to our post. Why would I send yeah. a patrol out there? That's fucked. And, so, so, and, like, you can see how the pisser bottles out there. Remember that in front of the palm grove? Oh, my God. Yep. No matter how many bottles of that <clears throat> water you would pour down it, it still never got rid of the smell. Ugh. And everybody knows what that's like. You know, if you've been in those conditions is what I'm trying to say. It's Ugh, not every, stings. It stings you. It's that leftover ammonia. Like, you can even see that <gasps> caked on yellow. <laughs> 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 Dude, I we had like I'm so showering as soon as this episode's done, I swear to you. We put on gas masks. It got so bad. At first we had bandanas and we had dropped blouses, and then we just we were like, we need to put on gas masks. You drop blouses? Oh, that's that's likely to cause a skin condition. No big whoop. We're fine. Fuck it. So we dug all that shit out and then we inserted it. Remember we put in like three piss tubes or whatever. Which was nice. I thought it was good. And then we had those pallets with the rocks underneath and shit like that. That was nice. That was better than before. Nice. So. You're welcome, ECP North. You fucks. Yeah. God. wonder what it is now. It's probably something stupid. Well, I wonder they, what they, they did when they were trying, like, I call came across the shitter room. That under <laughs> the underground room with all of our shit in it. They're like, hey, let's build a house here. Someone builds their house. They're like, man, it always smells. <laughs> <laughs> One day the floor gives out. And they're just in this pile of our soup. Ten years old. Oh, my God. Creature has grown out of it. That's how they made that movie. We, uh, 
Well, remember how they used to put sand on top of the roof and then we would fill sandbags? Like we just yeah. we had sand up there that accumulated due to sandstorms and everything else. It was fucking weird. But, but that was around that, that was time. The weirdest thing laying down and filling sandbags. It's like I can't, why can't I just do this downstairs where it's <sighs> Right. But the but it made sense though why we did it up up top if you really sit down and think about it. Because if you let it all accumulate on your fucking roof, it will cave in. And then, yeah, but that, I mean, it wasn't in like, that was a pretty solid structure. Yeah. But there was enough sand up there to get like hundreds of sandbags out of that shit. That was fucking nuts. Yeah. But we kept them up there and build posts out of them. Well, yeah, but that was on the, that, that made, it made sense where the post was though, because that was the footing that was already there. It already had infrastructure. What didn't make sense is that we needed to dodge sniper fire in order to fill sandbags. That's the fucked up part. That's what you're yeah. leaving out. Okay, not the fact that it's on the roof, that, that you needed to be in full kit because somebody would shoot at you invariably or inevitably. That's true. Very uncomfortable <laughs> setting, laying down, filling sandbags in full kit, 120 degrees outside, no shade. And you're just thinking to yourself, like, what the fuck am I doing here? Right. Why? Why is this moment happening? I mean, you appreciate it afterwards. But at that moment, you're like, this is so fucking stupid. Yeah. I swear if I die here, I'm haunting everybody. I'm coming back and haunting everybody. <laughs> it's just going to happen. <laughs> Screw this, man. Willie was a dick half an hour ago. Fuck him. I'm going to fuck with him first. <laughs> I'm going to haunt my fucking platoon. He's going to get shot by a sniper on a roof, broad daylight, filling sandbag. You <laughs> motherfuckers! <laughs> like, the, the, literally, the blast from the... I would already be prepared. The blood oh spray God. would, like, write red rum on the wall or something. <laughs> be like, red rum, motherfuckers! I'm coming back! Uh. See, I didn't go that in depth with it, but that other building that was adjacent to ECP North that we eventually dermoed. Yeah. That was awesome. That was a lot of C4. Yes, it was in deck cord, and it was very cool. Um, so so uh, I was sitting on post over there, and the building rocked. Like, just kind of went like. And the walls <laughs> shifted a little bit, and I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna dive out of this motherfucker. Like I'm just gonna jump. I'm gonna I'm gonna go head first. <laughs> I swear to God, I'm gonna jump off this fucking post. I don't give a shit. But I'm well, telling yeah, you, just put your arms up. You know, right? Let them take it with your Kevlar. I mean, you're you got your Kevlar on. It'll take some of the brunt. But I, you know, just, you know all that I could think of was I wanted to beat the shit out of SOG for putting us in this for putting us in this goddamn post to begin with i should have brought that shit up with pichot because i was stuck over i was stuck with pichot with pichot as cog and then we had some other poor bastard that was standing post on the other side and i basically was staring at the bridge like eight people were looking at the same thing i was looking at i was like yeah this is fantastic this is awesome and the building's fucking creaking around me this is cool i'm basically sitting in a in a fucking giant house of cards this is this is gonna be great I would love for the building to collapse around me right now. Not a good setting. And then, was it you who was telling me that when they hit the initial deck cord, the building fell down and then everything blew up? Was that you? No, I don't think so. I, did, I was out on town when they did it. So I was on a burn but watching. I got to see them, like, moving in, setting up. I was on a burn watching. And I remember when they wrapped deck cord around all the pylons that were underneath. Where were, I can't remember where I was. I know I didn't get to be, like, I wasn't in the vicinity for some reason. Dude, but they put... But I remember them setting it up. They put so much deck cord on the pylons and then shit, I believe, that was, like, in the middle as well in order to implode it. Then when they actually hit the pylon charge, the building collapsed in on itself because it was just ready to go. And then the second charge hit. So it was like, boom. 
The building collapsed in. And the entire building like blew up into splintered chunks and shit all over the place. Which was really cool. But. Dude, that building was sketch from the beginning. We shouldn't have gone in that thing. Yeah. It was just this big. What was that? Like the barracks attached to the. Mm -hmm. To the mosque there. Or not the mosque, the palace. Yeah, palace. That's a stretch. Well, whatever. What would have been? What would have been? What would have been a palace? The raw if it wasn't beginning. Creepy as shit. Remember telling ghost stories at the in the bats room? Yeah, well, because no. cause there were two bathrooms that were in the place. There were where we no t- bats, bats. Oh, in the bats rooms. You mean where bats and hides were? See, I didn't go in there. I mean, I spent some time if we brought in pucks or anything like that, but I didn't really go yeah. in there. I was always searching them, or I was out. I did whatever I could to be, if I was down there, I wanted to go out where the vehicles were and all that other shit because it was the dangerous place to go. I was like, yeah, but I might get to kill somebody. So, Because <laughs> remember the dog guys? They were fucking cool, man. And then those auto M4s. They had M4A1s. And they were like, yeah, I'm going to fucking smoke somebody with this thing. And I didn't think they were A1s. I thought they were M4s, but they just had fully auto triggers. Like, I thought, or not m 4 uh, M4A2s or whatever uh-huh. with uh, trigger assembly. Whatever it was, it was cool. Ah, uh, yes. I bet that building doesn't even exist yet. Or anymore. That whole, like, ECP area. Because, I mean, it's all... Probably not. Fucking ISIS owns that. <coughs> That's crazy. That's why I'm like, I don't give a shit. Let's talk about Ramadi all we want. Those bastards own it right now. Like, yeah, you want to know the routes? Come here. <laughs> you want to go crush Daesh? Or whatever the fuck they're called? Here, I'll show you a map. Uh, a lot of good that knowledge will ever do me. Like, I've tried to data dump as much of Ramadi as possible. <laughs> That's why I can remember poems on the Port of Shitter wall. So Cigars and Sea Stories get to turn into cigars and... And... What? No, some... I'm saying the layout and the roads and shit like that. Like, I, oh. I still remember the sea stories. I just don't choose to remember. Like, I remember Sunset and Retard and, you know, the intersections and going around the racetrack and shit like that. But, you know, I try to data dump all the routes or, like, where the barriers were. For a time, I knew where all the makeshift barriers were that we traveled around near. Because, and you then know. then you're like, that one's out of place. Something's wrong. Right. Oh, shit. And then your sphincter is tiny because it's all the way up where your stomach is sucked in. Well, and it's like, okay, do you remember when they tried to cut off Buckeye and then have us travel a different route through the city? And it was like they just pulled shit across Buckeye. Do you remember that? I mean, it was me who crossed it. I figured that you wouldn't. I mean, whatever the fuck. But we had EOD and support. We were going over to Gov Center. And there's, like, makeshift metal and branches and all sorts of shit. And, like, blown up chunks of Jersey barrier and tires and shit. You know? And EOD is like, yeah, man, no problem. They just blew it up in place. And then we went around. Or whatever. They just blew three quarters of it out of the road. We just shoved it out of the road. And we're like, fuck you. You know, but they were clearly trying to channel us somewhere. So, um, I guess that's a pretty obvious example. <laughs> right. Well, remember the cinder blocks on How wires? You get from cinder walls to the to where we're at now. I don't know. We just chased just threads down happens. rabbit holes. Hey, shit happens, all I know. Did it? All I know. I, yeah. All I know is this: no matter how bad the shit we talk about is or how it's fucking bad it gets at least 
we never have to do it in mop gear again. <laughs> oh, That's all I know. Oh my god. At least you don't have to do it in mop level four. Ugh. Fuck you. Always <laughs> mop four. It's filth. It's you weird. Might as well be in a sewer. Well, and you know how sweat accumulates in your gloves and your only reprieve is to just lift your arms up and everything trickles down your rib cage. And you just can like, when you like interlace your fingers and you just fucking feel that. (laughs) Yes. The only thing that's about as good as that is pissing (laughs) pissing (laughs) wetsuit. Yeah. Well, at least pissing in a wetsuit, like it's being replenished, you know, and it's like, right, oh, it's warm, and it's like, and oh, at least it's the coolness, and then, right, right. Ah. and at least you can like wash it off, you know, like, like you could, like, yeah, you know, there's, there's a semblance of water still flowing through there, right. but, uh, but a mop suit, that shit ain't happening. <sighs> and did, did, did you guys ever have to piss a mop suit? Oh God, yeah. I was just oh, wondering. and your skin starts turning into like paste because the outside layers like flaked <laughs> off, you know. <laughs> Oh, yeah. dude. dude, shit, Stone, and it just starts to hurt. Stone figured out how to jerk off in one of those things. I saw him one day, like, loosening his glove, and I'm like, what are you doing? And he's like, if the suspender strap stays here, and then I pull here, and he starts wiggling his arm out of his sleeve, so it's just floppy and loose, and I see, like, the... You know, the, the pitch in a tent. <laughs> like, what are you doing? He's like, oh. The shit that we talk about, the shit we get reduced to talk about. Oh, man. Dude. I had to bring up the mop gear thing, but oh, well. Even drinking in mop gear sucks. Oh, fuck. All of it. Everything. Every ounce of everything. Every molecule, nuclei, whatever. <laughs> of and every- you know that if something real actually happened... It didn't it's matter. It's designed to make that shit completely. Un- it's just there for our brain to think that it's gonna do something. Like, re- like it's not doing shit, man. That shit, like, right. maybe if you're on the very outer edge and you happen to be sprinting, and you only like get in one whiff and you didn't breathe at all, and like, like you're able to get the fuck out of there. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> but if you're like knee deep in that shit, that you're shit's fucked. doing nothing. It's doing jack uh, shit. Jesus Christ. Especially, it's, I just remember, I just remember, this is like the epitome of, oh, I'm fucked if it ever goes down, is this was in uh, some training mission that we were doing. And they actually just, one of the things that they love to do in training and recon is hit you with CS. Every other fucking minute, CS canisters are coming flying at your ass, right? Right. So... This was a time we actually couldn't run away. We couldn't get away. So we had to don our gas masks. Well, the waterproof bag had failed. Oh. And, you know, we had already, like, swam across the intercoastal and, like, trudged through a couple swamps. Yeah. So I fucking, my, my, uh, fucking filter was full of water. So I go like that, and I thought I was choking to death. You know, next thing I know, I don my gas mask. (laughs) No, (laughs) fuck no. And then I take it off, and it's fucking, you know. CS. CS City. (laughs) 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 Fuck you. Run, bitch. You didn't do the two finger. That was, right. Dude. Dude, that was was the thing that I learned too sweet, is I was like, okay. If this shit clogs up, just pull away from your face with your hand against the filter and shove your non-firing hand two right. fingers in between the seal. Because that shit might kill you, but it ain't going to be immediate. Uh, so, like, <laughs> just two fingers. Come here, fucker. Uh, All right. I'm going to kill you. Know, and that's the other thing. All I know is that CS grenade, CS, you know, canister grenades are so much worse than the chamber. Oh, uh, God, yeah, because it's a concentrate. Oh, it's a concentrate. So bad, dude. So, so bad. Awful. And it gets awful. on the vegetation and the grass and everything it's just, else. It's just awful. So anyway. It's just story. mean. It's just mean. We're just it's mean just, to ourselves. Uh, <laughs> Go there. 
That shit's just, fucking... See, because they're all angry. All the instructors are angry as fuck. Like, oh, it happened to me? I'm going to fuck this dude up. I'm going to fuck this motherfucker up. Yeah. Oh, you, it. Thought it, you thought it was a good idea to put that pause in a ditch. And then they just, like, trinkle it down a fucking ditch. And your ass is so done. Next thing you know, you see white, white billowing smoke. And you're like, oh, fuck. Concentrate. Suck. And then and then all you do is you get that little whiff and everybody loses their fucking mind. <laughs> <laughs> their their eyes go it, wide. Their eyes go wide and you're like, oh shit. The the feeling for me is like when you get water up your nose. The first whiff. Oh, it's horrible. Is is it feels like it just slammed up your nose and you're like, ah! your face just. Right there is concentrated on on fire. <sighs> milk, uh, milk helps. Shaving cream. Nothing. What? Nothing helps. Until nothing it's helps. Nothing. You're fucked. Run, fucking run. That's what helps. <laughs> 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 Grab your shit and run. Get the Down. fuck out, motherfuckers! Go. Fucking upwind. That's all I know. That's why I live in Mop Four. Because I because uh, I fear CS grenades. I'm afraid of it. I'm afraid of it. Every day. That's what I do. Have like an intervention show about it. <laughs> Mike sitting in his backyard in Mop 4. <laughs> He's been doing this for 10 years. We try to tell him that the CS isn't going to show up. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine, Mike. We promise. It's okay. Oh, my God. It'll only sting a little bit if it does. No, I was the guy, Sebastian can tell you, I was the guy who ripped people's gas masks off in the chamber because I was a fucking asshole. Sometimes no, I regret that. I was the that, guy that, why that the chamber, the chamber wasn't bad. It was literally people just, it was the one that was, it's just a check in the box. It's really not that bad because they don't put enough pellets to really make it bad, you know? No, right, no. So, right. so I was the asshole that was just like, okay, like, I'm just not going to put my mask back on when they tell me and just start screaming. Ah! <laughs> just like, wait till you like do the circle around the room and then walk out just screaming the whole time. Panic. Like, no, not panic. Just screaming like, for this. Just like war cry. Fuck it. Ah! No, not me. I was the guy who like, I would throw the other dude's hand off my shoulder and kind of like slip away. So he didn't know where he was going. I was that guy. I, I like I would fuck, fuck you, you. I would fuck with people. Well, because I mean, don't get me wrong. Boot camp, I was fucking petrified, just like everybody else. You know, I didn't start. I didn't start out that way. But when we were in Twenty Nine Palms, we were both, you know, like we were NCOs and we were doing whatever, and we had to go to the gas chamber twice that year, which sucked. And we told everybody to shave, just like our seniors told us to shave. Asshole. Yep. Told them that, <laughs> told them there was gonna be an inspection because it was we were coming up on Libo and all of this other shit, so we're gonna have morning formation and inspection the whole nine yards. We didn't tell them that we were going to the gas chamber. And then we all loaded up and they're like, Where are we going? And it's like, Oh yeah, we're going to the gas chamber and they're like, Oh, okay, that's gonna fucking suck. Do we have everything? Like, I hope so, because you pack per the Feel you know per the packing list and all of this other shit and yeah they had everything, but it sucks man it sucks. That's why I like going to the gas chamber on Mondays, because everybody's got a fresh haircut. All those open, all those open pores, mm, some fresh wounds. You had to get the horseshoe, didn't you, with the straight edge and the massage? Here you go. And then I'm I'm rocking a low low. Like five o'clock shadow rolling into that motherfucker. <laughs> uh, I'm going, just ruthless. I would say that I'm going to hell, but my first duty station was 29 Palms, so fuck you. That's right. <laughs> That's right, bitches. I miss 29 Palms every once in a while. <laughs> you mean you miss just sweating for no reason being pissed off? <laughs> Uh, you missed looking outside on a catwalk going, oh, my God, three <laughs> more years. <laughs> it's like the surface of fucking Mars, man. If you haven't noticed, we're all fucking melting. 
Uh, You're like, I, my bowels can't take Santana's anymore, but there's nothing else. Yeah, there's, well, what else How is going to, what else is going to feed Lake Bandini? Oh, dude. <laughs> How much, if you had to guess, what percentage of Lake Bandini is How How's <laughs> food? A third of it? A quarter uh, of it? Probably, probably, yeah. I mean, you're, that's a solid estimate. Church's chicken. Huh. Church's chicken. Remember that? It wasn't even real. It was like two it was a people liquor store. Just like, yeah. And yeah. then they just, just said church's chicken. And this lady would cook food at her house and bring it. Yeah. And they would microwave it for you. They had deals on on booze box sets that had like rocks glasses Jeez. and shit like that. They even delivered that shit to my house. I'm like, yeah, I'm that guy. And I describe myself, my tattoos. They're like, oh, yeah, I know you. And I'm like, yeah, man, can you grab that box set of fucking Shabazz Regal? They were like, they were like the Chivas Regal. I'm like, yeah, yeah, can you grab that with the order? So I got, like, chicken and liquor delivered to my house. Because <laughs> Church's chicken is fucking awesome. See what I mean? Every once in a while, I miss clam palms. I'm like, fuck, man, I'm going to do that and then get a tattoo. Ugh. All while drinking the entire time. Yeah. Just, just walking. Never not a beer. Just going back and forth in between Circle K and the tattoo shop in front of the Bible bookshop or the fucking Christian <laughs> bookstore that's right there. And then up to the, you know, up to the stumps. Just and you got that one chief warrant officer in there. There's nothing good. There's nothing good. Oh man. Great tattoo shops. Great bars. Well, probably not right now. The silver screen. I they did sh- have a lot of experience at those tattoo shops. Yep, that was solid. Yeah, that, that was like somebody's somebody's uh, what's it called? Not stomping grounds, but uh, proving ground. Right of yeah, proving ground. Right of passage was twenty nine palms done well. Yep. Yeah, you're right. I don't know. Bunch miss. of fucking jarhead tattoos. <laughs> Good memory. You know, I want a USMC thing, but I want it to be unique. You know what I mean? Like, I want it to say, say I'm a Marine, but, like, I don't want people to really know, but, like, I want to know, and I want people to, like, know, really know, you know? And tribal. It's got to be tribal. <laughs> it's got to be my, like, my upper Celtic. arm and my thigh. It's got to be my upper thigh, got... and it's got to be machine gun bullets wrapping around my thigh. <laughs> I'm uh, gonna be a little Celtic because I'm like one eighteenth Irish. <laughs> uh, there's a boot right now. Get one of them tattoos. I'm one sixteenth Blackfoot, so it's got to be like a native thing. <laughs> I'm gonna tattoo a kilt on myself. Fuck. <laughs> it could be a whole nother episode. It could be. There you go. Tattoos. The tattoos they carry. See, I didn't get one. I always had these dreams of Granger, like I was going to be special, and uh, I wanted to do something. Like I never wanted like designators that would identify who I am, but I never, I never ended up going that route. Just never so now, happened. now my the, body the is bright. like a, an empty <laughs> tapestry. There you go. Can always uh, start now. Let the ink begin. Let yep. the ink begin. It's got to be an. A special type of ink. Oh, you know what you should totally get? Spread eagle vagina teeth on your forearm. Right there on your forearm. Just take, yeah, you I'm know, like pen that. art. I'm not right going to do the... that at all. Why not? That would be... No? Because it's not... It, it means very little to me. I mean, aside... You know, like hey, a hairy, scary a beaver. Episode. Scary beaver? Just like, hey, guys, listen. This is a conversation starter. Yeah, so the vagina teeth. Let me explain. <laughs> <laughs> let me break the so ice real quick the, so what the fuck is that on your arm Justin? man what a what a beautiful piece you have there thank you i appreciate it yes it's a uh, it represents it a time of growth in my life where i, I symbolically see. got the ability to bite dicks off with my vagina like what the <laughs> fuck i'm just saying like, if you wanted some erotic art you could go back to the port of shit or wall for some for some muses <laughs> You want me to make my body a wall of Portis shitter? Thanks, Mike. You're welcome. And that's (laughs) this freaking episode full circle. There you go. Right. There it is. 
There no, it is. It's called it's comedic re- timing, people. You get used to it. Uh, it happens in every episode. Just saying. It does. <laughs> Glorious. Uh, yep. And there you go. On this episode. Another, another wonderful episode. Thank you so much for joining us. If you have not already done so, subscribe, rate, and review. You can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, Player FM. We've got a variety of different aggregators that are out there. Come one, come all. Give us your reviews. Tell us your comments. Give us your feedback. Folks are awesome. They've been catching little like, hey, man, you slipped this up, and there was a typo here, and all this other stuff. This is for us. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, because that puts a better professional touch to everything and it improves our overall image. Uh, So we would love to have you on the show, get in touch with us, uh, share your sea stories with us in written word. You can use a pseudonym, you can do whatever. Hey, anonymous, I've got a poem. I don't give a shit what it is, but send it to us. Contact at cigarsandseastories.com. You can get in touch with Sebastian. What, yours is Sebastian at CigarsAndSeaStories.com, Bennett and Cigars and Sea Stories, and then Mike at Cigars and Sea Stories. So go ahead, send us a quick little note. Like, hey, you guys suck. Here's how you can improve. See? Hey, Dia, don't talk anymore. <laughs> right? Oh. Oh, that's mean. And on that note, we cue the music. <laughs> <laughs>